we're going to continue our study of trig functions, uh, focusing exclusively on the right triangles. Um, we already know that we can define the sine, cosine, and tangent functions as follows, where sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, so if we know the side lengths of a right triangle, we can get the values of these trig functions. Um, so uh, in this section, we're going to learn how to find the values of trig functions by using SOHCAHTOA. We're going to be able to find a missing side of a right triangle, and we're going to be able to find a missing angle of a right triangle. Um, we'll begin um, with this right triangle here. So we know all three sides, and they want us to find sine of A, cosine of A, and tan of A, and then also sine, cosine, and tangent for the angle B up here. So this is where it's kind of important to remember that opposite and adjacent are terms that are relative to the angle where you're, you know, that you're interested in. So if we're starting out at angle A, um, then the opposite side is this side uh, of length 4, and the adjacent side has length 7. So sine of A um, is 4 over the square root of 65. Uh, cosine of A, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 7 over the square root of 65. And tan of A, is uh, opposite over adjacent, that's 4 over 7. Um, next, they want us to do the same thing, but for the angle B, so now if we're standing up here at angle B, then, then the opposite side is now that side length 7, and the adjacent side is side length 4. So sine of b is 7 over the square root of 65. Uh, cosine of b is 4 over the square root of 65. And tangent of b opposite over adjacent is 7 over 4. So if we know all the, all the side lengths, we can get sine, cosine, and tangent for either of the two acute angles in the right triangle. What we're going to focus mostly on is how we solve a right triangle. And when we solve a right triangle, this is really important, the goal is to provide all missing pieces of information. So any missing sides, any missing angles. The instructions that you'll have will say solve a right triangle. Sometimes people mistakenly think that means I just need to find all the sides. You have to find the angles as well. Um, and we'll, the way that we solve a right triangle is to use SOHCAHTOA, the Pythagorean theorem, um, using the fact that we know all of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So. Um, if there's no sketch provided, I usually start by sketching a triangle with the given information and, and then label the, the unknown sides. Um, we'll try to express each of the unknown values in terms of just known values so that we can then solve each of those sort of little equations um, to get the unknown values. Um, and then using either SOHCAHTOA or the Pythagorean theorem to set up those equations uh, and to solve. Um, we have a couple of built-in checks. One is that um, the sum of the angles, angles should always add up to 180 degrees, and the Pythagorean theorem should hold for the side lengths. So, um, in example 112, it says solve the right triangle with angle A equals 50 degrees and side B equals 6.70. So we'll just note that um, in, a, in a generic right triangle, capital letters uh, denote the angles, lowercase letters denote side lengths. Um, so the right angle is always C. Um, the two acute angles are A and B. And then the sides are labeled A, B, and C with each lowercase letter assigned to the side opposite the corresponding angle. So note that side A is opposite angle A. 
side B is opposite angle B, side C is opposite angle C. So in example 112, they tell us that uh, an angle A is 50 degrees. So then that's angle B, this is angle C. Side B is 6.70, so that's down here, opposite angle B. This is side A and that's side C. So they've given us an angle and a side, and we need to find angle B and side A and side C. We always know angle C because that's always 90 degrees, so that's never one that we need to explicitly find or state. Um, in the beginning, I would say in this problem, the low-hanging fruit is simply to find angle B first because we know angle A. So since all of the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, angle B is equal to 180 minus 50 minus 90. And that gives us 40 degrees. Another way to think of it is with a right triangle, because you know that angle C is always 90 degrees, you could think of it as the two acute angles have to add up to 90. So some people might solve for angle B just by going straight to you know 90 minus 50. You still get 40 degrees there, of course. So we know angle B is 40 degrees. Okay, now we're just going to pick a side to solve for. It doesn't matter which one. So let's say we find side A first. I want to hopefully set up an equation that involves the side I'm looking for and then only the given information, if possible. I try to use only given information uh, because if I made a mistake in solving for something, it won't follow me through to all of the rest of my solution for the triangle. So this is just what I think of as a good practice in solving. It's not that there's something wrong with using information you've already found. It's okay to do. I just think it's safer to rely just on the given information. And if I rely only on the given information, then um, the trig function that involves angle A, side A, and side B is the tangent function. I know that tangent of 50 degrees is opposite over adjacent, that's A over 6.70. And if I want to solve for A, since I'm dividing A by 6.70, I'll get it by itself by multiplying both sides by 6.70. So that means that A is equal to 6.70 times tan of 50 degrees. I'm making sure my calculator is in degree mode, and it is. I get 7.98. I'm rounding it to the hundredths because this, the side they gave me had three, what we call three significant digits, and we'll talk about that again later on, but I try to use the same number of digits uh, in my answer. Um, if I, It's okay to go further if you want to. I definitely wouldn't round any more coarsely than that. So we know A is 7.98. All right, and now what's left is to find side C. Now, um, if you're at this point thinking, oh, I'll just use Pythagoras to find side C, that's okay to do. Again, I'm going to uh, try to use only the given information. So, oops. So using only the given information, which is highlighted here, and then to find side C, Let's see, I know the adjacent side. I want to find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the cosine function. Cosine of 50 degrees is equal to 
over C. Now look, we're in a position right now where our unknown, the thing we want to solve for, is in the bottom. So this is going to take an extra step. If I want to solve for C and it's in the bottom, the first thing I'm going to do is get it out of the bottom by multiplying both sides by C. So now I know that C times cosine of 50 degrees is equal to 6.70. Now, cosine of 50 degrees is just a number. I mean, I could plug it into the calculator if I wanted to get an approximation for it, and you might want to do that. That's fine to do. But I know it's just a number, so that means I can divide both sides by cosine 50 degrees. So that's what I'm going to do here. And this tells me that C is equal to 6.70 divided by cosine of 50 degrees. Uh, now I'll turn to my calculator. 6.70 divide by cosine 50 degrees and I get 10.4. So three digits. I'm using three digits. Now, we didn't use Pythagoras to solve for C, and that means that we can use Pythagoras as a check if we want. So, 6.70 squared plus uh, 7.98 squared. It is 108.5704. Now, um, when I check 10.04 uh, squared, uh, sorry, 10.4 squared, it might not be that exact, but it should be quite, quite close. I get 108.16. And we'll note that they are equal in three, using three significant digits. So uh, Pythagoras uh, really checks out there for us. So in this example, we were given one angle and one side. If you're going to solve a right triangle, um, aside from obviously knowing that you have a right angle, you have to have two other pieces of information, and at least one of which has to be a side. So here we had one side and one angle. In this example, they're giving us two sides. So I'm going to start by just drawing the triangle. Here's angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. They tell us that side B is 56.82 and side C is 79.55. So that means what we need to do is find side A, find angle A, and find angle B. So let's say we find side A first. Now because they gave us two sides, if I want to find side A using only the given information, I'm going to use Pythagoras for that. A squared plus 56.82 squared is equal to 79.55 squared. So I'm going to isolate the a squared, so I'll subtract 56.82 squared. And then take a square root of both sides. And again, I can, I can plug it in my calculator all in one go. If you like, you can do the subtraction first and get an approximation there and then take the square root and that's okay. We get 55.67.
Great. Okay, so now we got to find some angles. Um, again, I'm going to come at this by using only the given information. So we know sides C and B. So let's say we want to find angle A. So I want to make an equation that uses angle A and sides B and C. And the function I can choose, if I think SOHCAHTOA, um, then the function I'll choose there is cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. So I know that cosine of A is equal to 56.82 divided by 79.55. And if I know the value of cosine of A, it's equal to this fraction, and I want to find the angle A, that's what the inverse functions are for. So if cosine of A is equal to that fraction, I know that A is equal to arc cosine of 56.82 over 79.55. I'm making sure that I picked the inverse cosine, not just the regular cosine. And I'm going to close the parentheses. I get 44.42 degrees, approximately. And now to find angle B, again, I'm going to do it by using just the given information, but I'll have a built-in check when I'm done. Um, by the t when I find angle B, I should find that A and B add up to 90 degrees. So if I'm looking at this triangle, I'm standing up here at angle B, and I want to use a function. Uh, if I want to make an equation and pick the function that uses side B and side C, well now side B is no longer the adjacent side, it's opposite angle B. And C, of course, is always the hypotenuse. So that's the sine function. Sine of B is equal to 56.82 over 79.55. And that means that B is equal to arc sine. Oops arc sine 56.82 over get 45.58 and you can check these do add up to 90 so there we have solved this triangle we found all the missing information